Welcome to Chapter 9, Methods of Separation in Everyday Life. Join Molly and Valley on their exciting summer vacation across India as they discover how we separate different substances in our daily lives. Handpicking is the simplest method of separation, used when we can easily distinguish and remove unwanted particles by hand. Like picking stones from grains or separating black pepper from food. It works based on differences in size, color, and shape. Threshing is the process where farmers beat stocks to separate grains. It's hard work but farmers often sing folk songs while working. Modern threshing machines now make this process much easier and faster. Winnowing uses window blowing air to separate lighter husk from heavier grains. The traditional bamboo tray called soup is used for this. You can try this yourself with peanuts. Rub them and blow, the skins will fly away. Sieving separates particles based on size differences. A sieve has holes that allow smaller particles to pass through while larger particles stay behind. This is used in kitchens to remove bran from flour and at construction sites to separate sand from pebbles. Evaporation is used to separate solids dissolved in liquids. Seawater is kept in shallow pits where sunlight evaporates the water, leaving salt behind. You might have seen white patches on dark clothes in summer, that's evaporated sweat leaving salt. Sedimentation and decantation work together. When heavier particles settle at the bottom, that's sedimentation. Pouring out the clear liquid is decantation. This is how we can separate tea leaves from tea without a strainer, though it's not perfect. Filtration gives better separation using filters with fine pores. Filter paper, cloth, cotton, or charcoal can be used as filters. The muddy water experiment shows how effective filtration can be in purifying water. Churning separates butter from curd by vigorous stirring. The lighter butter floats to the top while buttermilk remains below. This can be done traditionally with a wooden churner or modernly with electric mixers. Magnetic separation uses magnets to separate magnetic materials like iron from non-magnetic materials. This is used in recycling to separate iron scrap and in many industries. The carpenter's story shows how useful magnets can be. Our fishing story highlights an important environmental issue. Fishing nets act as filters, but they're catching plastic pollution too. We need to be aware of water pollution and protect our rivers and oceans. Let's play a matching game. Can you connect each separation method with its correct example? This helps us understand when to use which method in real life situations. We've learned about handpicking, threshing, winnowing, sieving, evaporation, sedimentation, decantation, filtration, churning, and magnetic separation. Each method has its specific uses based on the properties of the substances we want to separate.